free and make it easier for center to get on the board. Yeah. I think that A lobby fight, though, and pushing nobody off the A line is going to be massively important. But EDG often make it feel like it's only the Sova playing there, and if you try to take that fight, suddenly they collapse onto you with a big A lobby ambush. So you do have to be careful. You see, in this round, they've got four players stacked up defending that side of the map there, EDG. And they're not throwing Util out right at the beginning. They're waiting to see if Sentinels try to take that space before they hit the ambush. So they went exactly for that strike. Is so going to be using a little bit of kit, make sure that they can clear the way, take rid, just get rid of the trip. Around information as well from nobody. He's just using that drone, but it was broken. There's still a bit of uncertainty, but this whole time EDG have taken deep A lobby control. You can see Kang Kang is posted here. Single. He's removing the drone. Cage up into his face. We'll have to use the stun to slow down any approach from Sen in case the punish was there. Smoggy still has paranoia in his hands as well. Yeah, he's not giving up the space. Kang Kang could thrive into this spot. Position a bonus round conversion in his side. Still flash has to be avoided. Still gets the one. Great adjustment and snap back with a crosshair placement. 40 seconds left for Sentinels, and the question remains exactly where which way are they trying to land? And Norofev will give them critical information to work with. It looks like they're going to group up over towards A, but that's still where Smoggy and Simon are. 30 seconds left. No easy openings, 25 seconds left. Jump spots. Smoggy sees it, catching it. A lot of information gathered. Fault line is good, though. Castanets on top, and Simon just trying to play this tight angle. Blinded up from the side, still lands that shot. Traded though, plant down for John QT, nothing to push this one back. Ridiculously good support of utility there from Celsius and Tens. Nobody's going to be framed. Somebody opens up wide, but up onto the heaven angle. Celsius, who's claiming that one, dropped down. Double digits of health, but it's only Chichu left. With the bulldog, they're here to reload. It gives Tens the prime opportunity to just pre-aim onto the angle. Big round for Sen to get onto the board, but a difficult one still. EDG fighting tooth and nail to hold on to these spots. You can see this team, they got some dangerous setups on the defense side. I think in terms of that team play that EDG were talking about and their preparation, yeah. This is the best tournament for them. Yeah. E even if you contrast it back to Tokyo, that was more individualism. And Kang Kang waking up and having uh, the world's most wonderful op performance we've seen from a player, I would argue. This version of EDG seems like they put in a lot more thought to their game and tactics on top of that. Yeah, I'd agree. I think that, you know, despite you could look at some of their opponents this tournament, and you might not be too impressed in terms of who they've actually bested. But for me, I've been paying attention to how they've been trying to play. And look at this, bit of a trap play setup, but stun missing. Hello, oh, accidental kill. Right through the wall, bit of unfortunate action occurring, at least for John QT, not unfortunate for EDG. But they respam it, and so both teams come out of that fairly similar. But with the Cypher down, this opens up different options. EDG could now try to push aggressive and get flanks off against Sen. And Sen could group up and go for a big site execute on to see where the Cypher's now got no utility. EDG don't choose the aggressive option, though. They're keeping players anchored to see to try to make up for that fact. Nobody has the rifle. Nobody has the rifle, but as he's looking for that information, I mean, that's what happens when the drone is used a little bit prior. Didn't have it to try and safely garner it. At least there's going to be relay bolts as well and space given. Yeah. This is ridiculously good from Sen. That lurk timing from Celsius is marvelous. Wait, but a it doesn't second. matter. Yeah, and Smog is right back in there. The paranoia is already sent out. That's preemptive. Outlaw in the hands of 140. Second. Down to the double digits, but still alive for now. Flies to the side. And he is a spearhead. Quite literally, in this case, man. Cracks open the seaside, despite the resistance that EDG were trying to put up. Doesn't seem likely that Kanko will be able to pull this off, but he is. Extraordinary player. If he had the stun to work with, maybe he'd be able to isolate a one. A wall to get in two, but honestly, with his money low, a 1v3. Best course of action probably going to be the save. Yeah. He's just seeing there whether anyone's going to give him a free duel. But Sentinels are going to play with a bit more discipline than that. Well, they're looking to try to take the gun. Yeah. They understand the importance of this one. Sentinels thinking ahead. Bye bye. 
second. Head clean off. Sen realize it. They're in danger of just being trapped down to the spike. So they're going to do a bit of a mad dash. But it does bring us down now. At least two to two in terms of the rounds. And it's nobody, the newer IGL for EDG, that actually gets the wrong read on this round. You see him being caught there going for the clear on A. He'd call for his team to reinforce the C site because in his head, that's the most logical place for Sentinels to end. You've just killed the defending Cypher. Why not hit that site where the anchor player is no longer there? Yeah. So they reinforce C with Simon, Smoggy, and keep A very weak. Nobody tries to hold it on his own, yeah. gets punished for that. Not necessarily hubris, though. It's just you can't cover the entire map when you're in that position. Perhaps he should have dropped off site, but nobody is a very confident player. We're going to see this version of EDG's trap being run on their eco. Trouble is, is Kang Kang is going to be falling for a second. Glides his way forward to a nice little win, and he's covered over the shoulder once more by tens. Spraying away, it matters not about that paranoia. Smoggy, they know he's playing somewhere nearby. It's all about clearing them out. They've got that diligence, TP up and over. Certainty for Smoggy. Love Just that. the one before he's dropped. All of the coordination working really brilliantly there for Sen. That additional pause that Zekin throws into things just to allow Tens on top of the box. They've been doing a lot of that. In a 4v1, Shishu once again finds himself in a spot that's simply unwinnable. 9 HP. <laughs> Listen, it's a nice shot of the Sassy. Who sends him now taking the lead. By the one round, it looks like they've regained a little bit of that composure just from uh, losing some of the prior rounds, but. Sen kind of running away with it. And they've also now experienced that A lobby delayed crunch. But it was on an eco, which yeah. was easier for them to deal with. These players swinging in from EDG did not have big rifles to be able to take the fight to them on an even basis. And so that should actually help Sen in the future figure out, okay, we had an idea of how to deal with it. Did it work? Do we need to make adjustments if there's going to be rifles up in the future? They did look pretty set on that, though. The, the, the stun coming out over towards A long was nice. It wasn't right at the beginning of the round. Both teams feeling each other out very well. But Sen coming on top, and EDG take attack timeout. Yeah. It seems like a good time for it. He just lost three in a row back into a big rifle. Look, summing up, I mean, there's plenty of ultimates sitting. Simon's got his rolling thunder. Nobody, the Hunter's Fury, definitely could try and make something happen proactively, maybe on the defense. One of the areas that I'd like to see EDG explore is trying to create mid pressure and make it very difficult for Sentinels to just walk into grass anytime they like. If you can do that, you're more likely to burn the drone out of Sassy, which means it's much more difficult for you to retake over towards A. There's a huge amount of benefits to trying to put some early mid pressure as the defenders, something that I think Fnatic do fantastically on this map. One of the reasons why they're probably the most dangerous team in the world on Haven. That an alpha, yeah. <laughs> That's that, I mean, that guy is just a demon. He absolutely is. There's some demonic plays in this server as well, though. We'll see if EDG can return that fire a little bit to make it even once more on this round right here. Sentinel Stone. A scary team, a dangerous team over the course of this tournament. Low expectations, I think, overall. From outside, a lot of the community talking about them. Absolutely, but I think that that made sense at the time, too. Yeah. They hadn't had a recent run of great form coming into champs, and they were the fourth seed. No other fourth seed even won a match. Made the switch set up. Fully lined it up there. Smoggy barely gets rid of the dart, so Kang Kang's not revealed in terms of his position, but Simon, I believe, spotted off into the corner. Wall up into his face. So tempted for Simon to swing that. Yeah, Zekin, you can see him. He was holding, waiting, trying to bait him in. Drone to re-clear out through mid EDG. I'll be looking to try and cook something up. He hit here through onto B after a little bit of a garage clear. Would be a great idea here for Sen. But this, do they anticipate two players garage? It looks like Kang Kang should be trying to pull attention and disappear. It's 40 seconds left out. Sen don't have map control over them through mid and they are surrounded on multiple fronts. Simon's a little far away to deny this plant with his ult. Is he going to rip it? 30 seconds. Yeah, well, the stun at least does connect. He doesn't let the ult go. Aftershock is a little bit delayed there. Lighting up onto second, but still the plan is down. Hunter's Fury trying to layer this one down, along with the rolling thunder. Cacophony of ultimates. And it is coming up to fruition. John Q2 there holding onto the corner. Simon with a reposition and does account for it. John QT dropped down, just can't reset the aim in time. 2v2. 
a tap. No Ruffeff reveals it. Fights to be taken down to that 1v1. And Chichu now going to be getting that information. Sassy is revealed with the shots fired off as well. Turn spot, pulls him off. No harm in sight for Chichu. He's tapping away as well, praying for those stray shots to hit Sassy. Might need to swing this one, Chichu! Unable to survive. When the recon misses there towards the end, Sassy's got a split second to make that decision to swing. Very close to letting that one slip through his fingers. But the player on Sentinels with that champion's trophy already in the cabinet comes up clutch for them again. A nice attempt by EDG once more to put pressure down mid on the retake. But the plant denial was late. I think that's a bit of an error there from Simon, actually. Led with the fault line and then the aftershock, but it was, it was a bit too delayed. Didn't stop Zekin from planting. And once more, the economy taking a tumble and a fall here for EDG. They don't even have a stack of players over towards A. There's nobody in Kanko. No, at this point, Sentinels are absolutely running away with it. Assuming they can convert the anti-eco. Kang Kang might have something to say with it. Jump spot. In through the sprint and the glide. Fully accurate. Nobody. Not long for it. Hot shots fired by Kang Kang. He's praying that he can land at least one of the targets. Hit one of the domes. But all the signs of life to send do see. And of course, him to scurry. Yeah, you've seen three players over on this site. You know that there's Max Wan, the Cypher, playing elsewhere. And the lead 10's inserted. He's always got that Omen ultimate to be able to go back to the rest of his team. And he might end up just walking backwards into the Kong Kong. No. He gets okay, he broken. Cancels. Wait a second. Kang Kang. Oh. Oh, and accounting for it. They've missed each other. But he's not watching. Not watching at all. And still damage is done to second. Softened up from the prior engagement still. Tens. Striking from behind. The trade is online. They might want to make their moves now over towards A, but already bodies are rapidly approaching. The trouble is EDG do not have the guns for the job. And Sentinels can backfill all of this space up to where Tense was, because they know it was only Kung Kung that went through. Bloody hell, I mean, the fault line starts here. Simon has plenty of chances for him. Still, he is landing them. The Sheriffs are singing right now for EDG. Vince of smoke, a lot of uncertainty for Sentinels. They can feel it. They're going to try and bail themselves out of this one. The Rolling Thunder is committed. Simon, tucked in the corner, but Stands out, there wasn't much he could do into that spot. So Sentinels were pushed into a tricky situation, feeling the need to offload some of those critical ults to at least find a way to win that. But that's very much a silver lining to a dark storm cloud approaching for EDG. A couple of moments where Chaos maybe could have made the difference for them, but I think John plays that really beautifully towards the end. Cage inside the smoke, gives him sound cues if anyone tries to push. And then you see John ping out where Zelsis should ult. The IGL making the call. All right, we've got to invest this ultimate now. It's only me and you. Four by stack. It does make this round a little weaker. But Sen have showcased that they can deal with everything that EDG are throwing on defense currently. Yeah, the mid-rounding is definitely, I think, showing that Sen are currently getting the right reads into rounds, making sure to slow it down at the right moments, and then the firepower usually carrying them over the line if it does get tricky. I think I'm right in saying the only time they've contested C fully is when they went for it on the pistol round. Yeah, it feels like the pistol round, at least from my memory. Drone is used hyper committed into A lobby, so Sentinels are going to be aware that that control is given up to EDG. Certainly looking like an execute's going to come through here on C. Smoggy has his ult to try to reinforce, but is he going to be fast enough with a smoke? Nowhere to run! to be broken here. The Hunter's Fury clears his way through and back and around here. The fault line was dodged by Chichu. Has found himself. He carved out a little bit of a pocket and space to play around. A paranoia still here, but the aftershot is way too much. Just singeing his feet. Chichu just couldn't stand still amongst most of that fire. Second offloading it with the overdrive. Peppering them some stray shots. EDG are gonna need a pick to see if they can make this one doable. Second overextending ever so slightly, but still he's good for the kill as well. They're tracking! They just can't get a handle or any sort of control on him. It's precise. Kang Kang almost there. Could have provided a chance, an opportunity, but Smoggy's been left alone into the 1v3 and Tens picks back up that position. Low enough as well, but again, surgical by Tens. It's looking like a great day for Tens out there as well. 11 and 4 after only eight rounds that's pretty ridiculous if you look at players that have had outsized impact outside of just the main duelists where you're going to see great performances from kong kong and zekin no matter what 
if you look at who's had the biggest impact for Sentinels and EDG, I'd be looking towards Tens and Smoggy. And the fact that they're on those smoke rolls fighting against each other right now gives you a great comparison. At the moment, Tens is just getting involved in way more on the attack side, trading people out. Again, finding moments to dominate with his impact. His raw aim so strong. Is Tens just going to disrespect the early A lobby? Util that was dished out by EDG, they're holding. Considering, I think, and waiting to see if there is that re-clearance. Drunk UT does need to be careful. Opens himself up to that angle there, but again, it's the weaponry. I mean, EDG have not been able to recover any sense of that. Nothing built up in the bank. You see there, John using a cage again for the sound cues, making sure that he can't get pressured as he takes a little more space towards mid. They're being very cautious on these anti-eco sentinels. They don't want to get tripped up. But it is incredible that EDG have only won the pistol and the follow-up. Where's the punish here? Where's the cover? Yeah, nobody watching just in case that was that punish here. Chichu, a couple of shots, backs away with his life, but just pulling apart the EDG defense. Second, build up by the camp, stunned up at that. I'm likely to see that follow-up. The more the time does get dragged down to the finer moments. I see opportunities for EDD to strike. After shot, pushing them back and away from the plant. Zelsis going for round two, needs to be covered. And Tens has it. Pushed up, high ground angle. Chichu dropped nobody off onto the extremity. Flawless from Sentinels. You can say that from round three onwards. They've always been in control. Have there been some dangerous moments where EDG have hit a nice shot, got into a good position? Yeah, of course. You're always going to get that with a team as good as EDG. And yet, Zen have sailed away. Clean swept the last seven rounds in a row. Kung Kung is finally going to bring out that operator. The economy's been damaged. Been in ruins. And for Kang Kang, it's double op. Double opping. That's smoggy. It's not round 12. They don't have money. Sentinels, bit of early orb farming as well. See if they can get that rolling thunder online, Zelsis. Now what away from it. And they have been prioritizing this smoke at the top of C Long as well, which cuts off Smoggy's sightline. He's not sure whether someone's tucked into Cubby, as Sassy has. He also doesn't know if someone's going to peek him from the right or the left. It's a tough situation to play with the AWP. Yeah, and it might come down to reactions if he gets peeked. I mean, he's also going to get pressure from Garage unless he can hold that off. Drone sees it. Off spotted. Out for Garage now. Pins to play by Sen. Try and make their moves in through the C site now. Wall cuts it up. You can see there's an awareness at the back of the heads of Sen. They're worried about this operator in play. At work. Paranoia is used to clear most of the way alongside the dart. There's many waves of the util. Sells with the plant. We'll get his ult online from this one. Everybody grouped up from EDG, setting themselves up to try and play for the retake, but it's preemptive. Send using it to try and strike. Chichu's there. Offset though, nobody covering it. An overextension by Sentinels. Now it's up to these remaining players if they can pick up the pieces, but the stun is immaculate, and the spray down from Zelsis only to one for his troubles. If Sentinels had had any idea there was a double operator set up in this round, I don't think they would have gone for such an aggressive post ban option. But they didn't want to allow EDG all of that util advantage. That is nasty. And that's a crazy double kill from Chichu. EDG have been waiting for a moment like that the whole time. And the double ops did not particularly contribute there. I actually hit my escape key. And that round, Kong Kong actually had the Neon Ultimate to be able to make up for it. He, when he goes for the retake, he doesn't have to just play slowly behind his team holding angles for them. Now, however, you take a look at what's going on for EDG. And he doesn't have that to be able to back himself up. Yeah, use just in case they get overwhelmed and swarmed here. Just that EDG's defensive setup. He can be entirely open for the taking. Obviously, it's Sentinels like... don't know this one. It's been cautious from beginning to end in most of these rounds as well. High priority to try and break some of this util through. But the trip is spotted. It was a kill trip that Chichi was hoping to play off of. But it's spammed through the wall. Second movement is so nice in these spots as well. Jump peeking scenarios where you might be thinking about an EDG player tucked in an angle. So difficult to play a one and done against a Neon with good movement like that. Here's another okay. Neon though with a big weapon. Let's go and re exploring. Risky, but you're down so many rounds that sometimes risk needs to be taken. Doesn't break down the drone. It's a fault line as well. Does catch. Slow down to a cruel cage on the cross. So, in a bit of that misinformation, Sentinels trying to make it feel like they could be. 
free taking over towards a lobby darts gonna be used side by side though shoulder to shoulder these players unaware that they've crossed up and Smoggy now isolated. He's on an island through the back of the site. The Utah once more. It is impeccable. Trying to dodge and weave around from this play. Chichu and Simon now. It's a quick flood attempt in through the back. Picking up these rifles in their hands. These for the upgrades. Hunter's Fury scatters through. Fights to be taken by EDG. They could be set up for success on most of it. Sprayed down. And with the Hunter's Fury dropping John QT, it's another round earned. EDG can add that to the tally. What a sick defensive read by nobody. I want to give him his credit here because he got the wrong read in a prior round that started this avalanche away from him. But this time, he'd already called the rotate over the six.